So this is basically my first instructional video ever. Um, I decided to do one because I'm always using people's instructional videos but never putting any back up. Uh, this one I've decided to do because I bought a reasonably cheap Chinese snorkel for my Isuzu KB300 4x4. It's a 2011 model if I'm not mistaken. So I decided to rather buy a cheapish Chinese snorkel for the for the vehicle and instead of going in and getting it done at a 4x4 center. Price comes in at about 40% of my quoted prices for, for taking it in. Um, obviously I'm going to have to fit it myself and spend the time fitting it and there's some sort of element of risk that I that I put it on incorrectly but we're going to see how it goes. Um, so before we get started with fitting the snorkel to the vehicle and I've never done this before um, I'm going to just show you a little bit about what comes in the kit when you buy it and um, some of the tools that we're going to use to to put the snorkel on. Okay first off this is the company that I bought the snorkel from it's Summit 4x4 Accessories I'll put a link to it in the description below and basically with shipping um, it was bought in, in uh, Pretoria in South Africa and with shipping to, to my nearest post office it came to a total of 2235 over there um, and this is the kit that came came with the with the package basically the uh, the first and most important thing I think in terms of the instruction is it came with this nice template that we're going to use to drill the holes into the car and then these are the bits and pieces that it comes with there's an air intake duct over here this is the actual snorkel over here and then over here is the uh, is the pipe that's going to connect the snorkel to the traditional air intake the traditional air intake is going to fit to that pipe with this piece of rubber over here. There's two hose clamps to go with that. And there's one hose clamp over here that's going to go on to, to fit the, the air intake on. Then there's also this bracket over here that's going to go above the door. And that's going to fit onto the snorkel over here and hold it securely above the door. It comes with a couple of stainless steel um, rivets, pop rivets there. And then there's a, a couple of bolts and nuts over here that's going to be used to mount the, the snorkel to the side of the car. And we'll get into that when we get there. Some of the tools that we're going to need to do the job is going to be a couple of drill bits. Um, this is an 8mm drill bit that I think I'm going to need. And then a 5mm one over here. And then you're going to need a 102mm hole saw over there. You're going to need some sort of a drill to, to work those. A couple of screwdrivers to help strip the car down a bit. And then we're going to need a variety of different sockets. I've got here an 8, 10, 12 and 13 that I think I'm going to need. That's going to be for stripping the vehicle down and also securing some of the nuts and, and bolts that we're going to need to put on. Some masking tape to, to mask over the vehicle before we drill in there. And we're going to need a pop rivet gun for, for mounting the brackets on top of the door. After we've drilled into the vehicle, we're going to have to deburr the, the holes with this piece of sandpaper over here and just cover up the holes that we've, that we've made with a bit of paint so they don't rust. And then we're also going to need to apply a bit of silicone here and there just to, to, um, to seal things up. I've also got this little piece of wire over here that I'm going to use to hang the mounting bracket. And I'm actually just going to give it a coat of spray paint because once we take the plastic off here, it's a shiny silver and uh, the vehicle is white. So I'm just going to give it a coat of white paint after priming it a bit. So what you do with these three threaded nipples is put each of them into the three holes that are on the snorkel. And just screw them in like that, tighten them up with an Allen wrench. Not sure exactly what size that is, but that fits over there. And then these three nipples are basically going to go through um, the three holes that you're going to make in the car and this over here is going to go through the big hole that we're going to make with the 102 millimeter hole saw there and basically if you if you imagine this is going to be the body of the car that's going to slip through the body of the car you're going to put this washer over here to stop the nut from pulling through the body of the car and then you're going to secure this on the other side or from the inside of the vehicle which is going to be difficult to film so here we go i've uh, stripped the plastic off the mounting bracket and i'm just gonna give it a spray of white primer all 
Okay, so the first step in the process is probably to take the snorkel and actually just put it onto the vehicle and see if it's the correct one for the vehicle. If is it going to fit? The last thing we want to do is start drilling some holes into the vehicle and find that it's it's not correct for the vehicle. And the way in which I see that over there and how it's going to mount looks to me like, yep, yeah, we definitely got the right one for this vehicle. Um, it was ordered correctly and this is going to work. Vehicle. And if you have a look over here, here's the air filter inside here. And from the air filter, there's a pipe that goes from here and it goes across right into the body, right above the wheel arch of the vehicle. And there's a cover over here. But pretty much what happens is the air that the vehicle needs to run is getting sucked in from this wheel arch above this wheel. Um, this vehicle spends a lot of time on dirt roads. So basically the, the vehicle is taking in dusty air all the time. And that's the reason why I'm putting the snorkel on. I'm not planning to try and drown the vehicle. My motivation basically is to, to try and clean up the air intake from the vehicle. So the first step in the process now is to strip off this cover and this wheel arch covering over here. So there's a couple of nuts and um, and screws and stuff that we have to take off there. So we're going to start with that. I have a little container over here that I put all of our little nuts and bolts into. It's always useful to have a little container so nothing goes missing. Um, and just keep all the things that you're going to need for in your installation in a container like that. And I've got another container over here that I'm going to put all the nuts and bolts into once I have stripped them off the vehicle. Okay, so what's happened now is I've stripped off the uh, covers the, the sort of uh, mud guard and this, this protective cover over here. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to loosen up this air filter here so that we can get to the existing air intake pipe over here. Okay, so now the air filter has been loosened up, had to take three of these bolts out. One of them quite difficult to get to, had to use a spanner instead of the socket wrench. And then on the inside, to get the old air intake out, there are two um, bolts that you have to undo that attach to two brackets. There's the one bracket there and then there's the other bracket over there. So from the inside of the vehicle you need to take those off and then just pull the old one out. You can see quite a lot of wearing over here. Looks like it was sucking in quite a bit of dust. That's the next part of the process is going to be putting on this template that seems to fit very nicely here. It's clearly been made for this vehicle and just to line it up absolutely perfectly with the edge of the body of the vehicle, it's quite obvious to see how it is that it's supposed to be lined up. But it takes a bit of moving around until all the edges line up exactly perfectly onto the vehicle. And once you've got it in place, you've got to put a bit of tape and stick it down. Just keep checking that you've got it just by running your fingers round along the edge of the cardboard and just making sure that it's really nice and snug with the vehicle. Once you've got the first few pieces of tape down and it's stuck on, then you just make a last double check that it's right and then you can really build it up with quite a bit of tape so it doesn't move around later on. And then once again, just to double check, obviously you've put your template on perfectly, but maybe a good idea before you start drilling into the vehicle is to just take the snorkel you can see where the three bolts are going to be and the center of that over there this big hole is is that hole over there that we're going to we're going to drill, drill the hole in from and just to line it up and just see does it look like everything would line up correctly it's not really easy to see because it doesn't sit flush without the big hole in the in the vehicle there but you can get a really good idea to see if you've you've got for starters the right snorkel and secondly that you've put the template on correctly and that looks fine so i'm just going to go ahead and start drilling Okay, so what I'm going to do before I drill in my, my three main holes over here is I'm going to check behind where I'm going to be drilling and just make sure that there's nothing there close behind the hole that's sensitive that I need to be careful about drilling into. The top one over here doesn't have a lot of space, so I shouldn't go through too deep. Um, and before I actually drill with the, the correct size, I'm just going to drill in a smaller pilot hole so that um, I make sure that when I drill my main hole that the, the drill bit doesn't move around at all and it's really nicely centered. Okay, so I've swapped over to the power drill. Um, the only reason why I've done that is because the cordless went flat. Nothing to do with the power or anything like that. Just the battery went flat and it's busy charging up. Okay. Then the pilot hole for the center. Okay. 
Okay, so I've run into a bit of a problem here, and that is that the hole saw that I have is actually for wood and not for steel. So I'm not going to be able to use this to drill through the, uh, through the body of the car. So what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to use the hole saw to drill myself a template that I can use to mark the car. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drill a hole through this piece of shutterboard here. So what I've done here is I've cut a piece of wood, 102 mil, and then I've taped over, I've ripped open the, the template and I've taped over it with masking tape. I've got my pilot hole already drilled in earlier. So that lines up with the, the pilot hole that was on the, uh, the wood template. And then I'm gonna draw in my circle over here with a black magic marker. And there you go, there's the 102 mil hole. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a pilot hole on the edge of the hole, and then I'm gonna cut around the edge of there with a, with a jigsaw. Okay, so next step in the process is to mark on the vehicle where we need to drill the three holes for the mounting bracket. So in order to mark that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach it to the snorkel, and I'm gonna attach it quite loosely. So there's a little bit of movement. If you look, it can adjust left and right, just in case the holes are slightly incorrectly drilled, then there is a bit of leeway to still mount it. So what I wanna do is I wanna have the mounting brackets kind of centered so there still is a bit of leeway both left and right um, on the bracket. Then I put it onto the vehicle. So that's it, make sure it's nice and snug exactly how it's gonna fit once it's bolted on. And then I go around and have a look and, uh, and see what I've done here, as you can see, is I've I've masked the the vehicle so that I can draw on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get in there and make a dot through each of the three holes onto the vehicle where I need to drill. Now I've taken the bracket off the snorkel and based on where the top of the bracket was, I can reposition it and just make sure that my three markers are clearly visible for when I'm going to drill. Okay, now I'm going to drill into the vehicle on the three markers that I've just made. Not too deep, I'm not sure what's behind this section of the body, so I'm really not going to go in too deep. And it's very close to the windshield, so be very, very careful about how you're drilling. What I've done now is I have connected the rubber pipe between the air filter box and the, the new internal um, pipe that connects the, the snorkel. And it was a bit finicky, um, it's a bit tight in here. Um, the, the hose clamps just fit, um, and yeah, everything everything seems to, to have fitted quite nicely. I just gotta now bolt the, the air filter box back down to the body. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're just pop riveting the mounting bracket for the snorkel on top of the door. Okay, the second to last step is just gonna be putting the actual air intake in, on. So it slides down nice and neatly and just easy to center it because there's a seam running down the middle of the snorkel, lines up with that little cut over there. There is a hose clamp here that it comes with. So just position it so that the hose clamp screw is kind of not that visible, sort of to the back of it um, next to the vehicle and then it'll look much better. So this is basically one of the last steps. Take the old dirty air filter that's been getting dirty for, from pulling air in from the wrong place throw it away, put a new air filter in. So here we have the final product. The snorkel ended up fitting really well. It fits nice and snug to the vehicle. It's clearly made for this exact vehicle. And the quality of the snorkel is absolutely fine for me. It's really hard plastic. I can't imagine how a much more expensive one would be a hell of a lot tougher than this is. I think that the project took a lot more time than I expected it to. It was a very time consuming job putting it on, but it was quite good fun and, and not too difficult. It was a little bit finicky here and there, having to screw in the pipe in the inside here and to put some of the, the bolts onto it, but it's perfectly possible. The only thing you really probably need to be very careful with is the drilling of the vehicle and just making sure that everything's lined up really nicely there. And I think the most time consuming part of the whole project was actually stripping the vehicle down to get access. 
and then putting everything back together again. So thank you for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it.